right. There was a moment uh, late yesterday when uh, Speaker McCarthy was able to cobble together a deal to keep the government lights on to the middle of November uh, that stock futures soared more than about 150 points. That was then. This is now. Stock swooning about 212 points, largely on the view that there's another battle to come up, and that is maybe for the speakership in general of the House. We'll get to that in a second. It is an uphill battle to remove Kevin McCarthy, by the way, but be that as it may, interest rates are backing up. A 10-year now close to 4.70%. We're not all that far from 5% if you think about it. And that reality of, of longer-term interest rates, market interest rates that will stick and stay high for a while, one of the things that uh, Scott Martin had warned about not too long ago when he was last with us, kind enough to join us again, Kingsview Asset Management CIO. You know, Scott, Washington drama notwithstanding, we come to expect that, but people had thought that the pressure on rates would start to subside. It hasn't. Anything but. What's going on? It's gotten worse, Neil, and I think it's just like you said in your intro, as usual, you nailed it. It's, it's the fact that we have all this uncertainty in government. We have a House speakership that is under duress, and we have, truthfully, Neil, a Fed. I mean, like you mentioned when, when we were on together last time, was just talking about how off base I think the Fed is and just how, say, tumultuous their future is when it comes to what they're going to do with interest rates. And so the market seems to be now preempting what the Fed says they're going to do, but has been pointed out many times over the last say several days as the Fed speak gets further analyzed, I think the Fed's just talking tough here. I think they're jawboning. I think they're faking everybody out. And it's going to come to a point where the Fed's going to have to ease back and eventually cut rates because of what they do to the economy. And so that's going to set up the stock market for a nice run here. But until that happens, obviously, we see days like today. You know, October is a scary month of the markets. It's not the worst. September actually gets the rap for that. And September lived up or should I say down to that billing last month. But then November, December tend to be friendly months, and the fourth quarter, a friendly quarter, so called Santa Claus rally and the like. Do you still envision that? I do, and I think the worst October gets, Neil. We've got Halloween coming up here in a short few uh, weeks here. I'll dress up as Michael Myers from my favorite movie, <laughs> Halloween, as usual. Maybe and wear it on air if you'd let me. But then, Neil, the worse things get, the better they're going to be in the future in the sense that the more of a drawdown we have, the worse some of this consumer data gets, the worse some of the outlook gets for, say, GDP, government spending. It kind of loads the spring for, like you said, the back end of the fourth quarter. So this November, December period, which is going to be heavily back by the consumer to come through once again and bring the S&P and NASDAQ back up. You know, could I ask you a dumb question on market rates? Because these are the rates over which the Fed cannot control. So a 10-year goes up, a 5-year, all these others start backing up. Does the Fed look at that and say, oh, we really don't have to do anything? The market is doing that. That takes some of the burden off of us. What do you think? I think that's a really smart question, actually, because that's something, Neil, I almost wish you were running for chairmanship. Now, we can't lose you here on the network, so don't get any ideas. Well, but someone's got to get the is, pizza, like you say, but go ahead. Yeah. But, hey, we've got to pay for the pizza, too, yeah, so I need right. another job to pay for all the food I'm eating, you know, fast food, Taco Bell, Burger King. But I'll tell you, Neil, the Fed should be exactly doing what you just said. They should look at market rates and say, we've set the course. We're on the path. The market is taking care of what we want it to take care of. Let's just lay off. Let's Let's get out of the way. As you know, my phrase with the Fed is chill. Just leave it alone. Calm down. Let the market work itself out. I think that is what the market is trying to tell the Fed, and they're not getting the message. You know, I don't know what kind of rogue investors you want to call in that are drawing the market's attention. I do look at Bitcoin right now up almost a thousand bucks, north of twenty-eight thousand dollars a coin. Uh, Mid-August, this thing was just sliding under twenty-six thousand a coin. I, I, I don't want to overstate that, but what do you make of that? It's wild. It's an alternative asset class like gold and silver, which are some things we've owned, Neil, this year, which have been good and bad. Yeah, yeah. But no joke. I mean, Bitcoin and some of those others, uh, some of those coins are on fire like Sam Bankman Fried's hair. And those are things that, that investors should think about maybe adding to their portfolios just again to diversify away from our main asset classes, which we have in our portfolios, stocks, bonds, and some of those things that are traditional, but not working out as well of late. All right. The stand up comedy always beckons you if this stock thing doesn't work out. But uh, always, always great. You'll be my sidekick. Yeah, See you, I, I would. I'd, I'd be a good Ed McMahon. Uh, Scott, thank you for that. Want to go to Dan Marica?